Let's start with a definition. We'll say that a square matrix A is diagonalizable if it's similar to a diagonal matrix D. I don't know if we've ever talked about diagonal matrices before, but they're exactly what you would think. They have entries on the main diagonal, but nowhere else. Everywhere else in the matrix, the entries are zero. And the other thing to remember is that the definition of similar would mean that A is PDP inverse for some matrix P. Now, let's go ahead and we'll talk about why this is important in other videos. But for right now, I just want to explore a little bit about what this diagonal means. So let's go ahead and say we've got exactly this kind of situation. We've got a matrix A. It's similar to a matrix D. Now, I don't actually have to say much about A, but let's go ahead and D, let's go ahead and say it's got entries D1, D2, down to Dn along the diagonal, and zeros everywhere else. And actually, this matrix P that's used for the similarity, I want to break that down a little bit too. For this one, just like we've done several times, let's just go ahead and think about it in terms of being a bunch of different column vectors stuck together to make a matrix. Now, let's think about the whole similar thing. So we have that A is equal to P times D times P inverse. And let's take that equation and let's multiply on both sides on the right by P. So here I'm going to get A times P. And when I multiply on the right here, I'm going to get a P inverse P, which is the identity. So this is just going to be PD. So what I've got is that my matrix A, whatever it is, times this matrix of where I've got the columns P1 up to Pn. That's going to be this matrix where I've got the columns P1 up to Pn times this thing with d1, d2, all down the diagonal, and zeros everywhere else. Well, we know when we multiply matrix times this, it's the same as multiplying each column by the matrix. So this gives us that AP1 is the first column, AP2 is the second column, all the way up to APN is the last column. And if we work out how this multiplication works, I get the first column is just going to be D1, because that's just a scalar, times the vector P1. The second one's going to be D2 times P2. And all the way through, each column is just being multiplied by the appropriate scalar from the diagonal entry there. Well, if we break this thing out then, that means that A times P1 has to be D1 times P1. A times P2 has to equal D2 times P2. And again, we get n different equations like that. A times Pn is dn pn. So for each of those columns of p, multiplying by a does the same thing as multiplying by the dn entry of that diagonal matrix. But hold on. That's exactly what it means for the d's to be eigenvalues, and the p column vectors, those are the eigenvectors. So what we have is the diagonal entries of D must be 
eigenvalues of A. Similarly, the corresponding columns of P are the associated eigenvectors. This is huge right there, but it actually immediately leads to something incredibly important. When can this be done? Well, this can only be done if P had to be an invertible matrix. So that means that when I take all these eigenvectors, put them into a matrix, I get an invertible matrix, which if we trace it all together, for that matrix to be invertible, it must mean that all the columns are linearly independent. And one of the things we studied in terms of bases is that if we've got n vectors that are linearly independent, they automatically form a basis. So what this immediately says is that the only way we can do this is if the eigenvectors of A form a basis for Rn. This is equivalent to A is diagonalizable. Now, in practice, what we're basically going to do is we're going to try to find those eigenvectors, try and find that basis there. If we can find it, then A is diagonalizable. And if we can't find it, A is not diagonalizable. Let's go through an example of this, but let's do it in the next video.